So the first thing you might want to do is, um, which most people do, is create their own chart, which is a select. And you'll see there's different options again that we'll go through here. And one of the questions I got asked the other day was, if I put in USA, I can't get the USA city. It says here country or state. And this is the way that the atlas has been set up from day one, because it was made in the USA. And instead of USA, and also there are so many different towns and cities with the same name. So there'll be Johnsonville in Chicago and Johnsonville in Massachusetts. And so if you are putting in somewhere in the USA, you need to put in the state. So California, CA, Illinois, IL or whatever, Massachusetts, MA. So that is one of the quirks of, of a lot of software. And if you've got the correct details, they'll go green. If you've got the wrong details, let's just try this. I haven't done this, which is always, yeah. It does, it does actually show you, it does bring up a little dialogue box that says, um, do you mean California, Canoga Park, if you put in USA? But see how it's then done this in red? <coughs> um, so it's not actually put in, you've got to be careful if it's red, it's not actually put in what you want. If you tab through and it's green, you've got it right. If you go here to specified, um, the type is unspecified, it really helps to put in male or female. Later on, if you go to do a synastry or something like that, the program will automatically pick up the gender of a person. So it does help to put that in. And you might also want to put in an event. And then you simply click on calculate. You've got the option there to put in comments. Um, so, you know, if you're seeing clients, you might want to put in comments, I often do, or if you're not sure of a birth time, you might want to say, well, this was the time according to the mother, but I've rectified it to whatever. And here is the chart that's come up for whatever date I've done. Yep, it's an Aquarian chart. And, um, sorry, I'm just looking at my notes because I want to make sure I do this in order so it's got some sort of sequence to it. That's your new chart, but you may actually want to open one that you've created already. So it's select, open chart, or if you've been working like I have quite a bit, and I won't go on that too much because so I've got clients' names on that list, um, but they are uh, recently used. So we open a chart here, just click on open chart, and you'll see that's my charts, but we might want to go just to miscellaneous. Now, you can then just flick through. I also want to po point out something that some people miss, is you've got these options down here. Now I like my names um, reversed, so I like the surname first. But you can, you can put them in, in uh, alphabetical order according to first names if you want to as well. So you can t click that on or click that off. But this is the one that I wanted to point out because it's quite handy, which is search. So let's say we want to um, search for Bill Clinton. And the search one is just over here. Search. I don't have a Bill Clinton. That was clever. Um, well, that's because you've got an email miscellaneous. Is it in politicians? It'll search, should search through them all. Oh, really? But also, Astro, that's a good point though, because Astro Gold doesn't come with all the chart files that SolarFire does. Uh -huh. But I'll show you later how to move your charts across if you're wanting to do that. But anyway, if we type in Clinton, there will be a Clinton there, and we search, and it's come up with Hillary. And that's a, if you've got lots and lots of charts, um, then that is a, a very handy feature to have. So we'll open one that we recently used, which was Meghan Markle. And I'm still really grateful to the person who got those details for us. And what I want to show, so you've done your new chart, you've opened a chart, you've looked at it, but you might have your own particular way of, you know, the points that you have on. Um, lately, I've sometimes added series because she's been elevated to a dwarf planet, um, but you might also have points. I've got a, a, a colleague in Adelaide who always, every time I give a talk or show her a program, says, why haven't you got the vertex on there? Mm -hmm. She's vertex centric. So up here in settings, this little wheel, we double click on that. This is your home button, and I'd be, you'd be surprised how many people ask me about this particular feature. It's basically whatever you want your default place to be. So if you're doing transits, if you're doing a chart, 
If you've got your whole family who were born in Adelaide or Melbourne, you might want that to be the default. But this is where you change it. And it's really as simple as typing it in and saving it as a default. Here is where you do displayed. So you displayed points. So you can click on what you want. So um, we'll click on series. You might want to click on the black moon Lilith, which will bring me to a point when we'll get to that when we get to calculations. And then you can just save as, or it should stay on. Aspected, these are the aspected points. This is something that um, you'll find in a couple of our programs that we've um, developed, is that you have aspects. So you have your conjunctions, your um, trines, your squares, your oppositions but you might not want every point aspected. So you might want all the major planets and the luminaries aspected, but you might, not, you might want to include the asteroids on your chart, but you don't want them aspected. Um, so this is where if you come into aspected, what points do you want aspected? And you just turn them on and off simply by <coughs> clicking on them. So I'm going to actually switch some of these off while I'm here because I am never likely, even if I include them in the white moon, Selena, even if I include them in my astrology chart, I'm unlikely to want them aspected. But sometimes people will say to me, <coughs> oh, I put the black moon Lilith in and it's not showing up the opposition to you know, my sun or whatever. Um, and I'll say, well, is it aspected? Have you got it under your aspected list? And here's your aspects, which are all pretty straightforward. Your conjunctions, here you can edit them, you can say what you want your orbs to be, separating, applying orbs, etc. And here's where you have your choice of wheels. And one nifty thing in Astro Gold is, and I'll show you this in a minute, is I look at triwheels often with my natal chart on the inside, then my progressions, and or then my transits, then my progressions. And I suddenly thought, why aren't they colour-coded so that you can see? Because sometimes if you're in a hurry or if you've got a lot of sag and fire like I have, it's like flick, flick, flick. And I think, oops, I put the transits on the wrong side to the progression. So here, if you want to, your natal and static charts will be a certain colour and we've colour-coded transits, progressions, directions. You can have that on or you can have that off. It's a choice. But I really like it. Here is also where some people who've seen the Getting Started in Astro Gold video have said, where did you get that wheel from? Because I use this wheel normally. So you can see that. I like that colourful one. You'll also find that if you have Astro Gold for iPhone, um, the, the screen is very small. They're getting bigger with some of the iPhone Pluses, but they're still very small. And the chart style that you have has the retrograde planets in red. It doesn't actually have the R. You can change it to a different chart style, a different wheel style, and then you'll get the R if you want to. Um, it's just really, it really started out when iPhone 3 was so small um, that we had, we decided to leave the R off and have the glyphs just that little bit bigger. So there are some good things that you can do in here. You can change those colours. You can have a black screen if you want. Some people really like that dark screen at the black, the black one at the back there. Obviously not so much with this chart style. Um, and then the next one under settings is calculations. And this is a really important one um, because you'll see here black moon. This is one of my fre most frequently asked questions on all of the Astro Golds. You've got black moon Lilith at, you know, so many degrees of Libra, but mine's really at Scorpio. Why is your program wrong? There's a true calculation for Lilith and a mean calculation for Lilith. Yeah. And this is where you change it under your calculations. And the, these, by the way, these settings will be similar in all of your Astro Golds. You've got all of these options pretty much. Um, now there's some extras, obviously. Um, you've got, even the iPhone, you've got um, the dignity term types and the dignity triplicity types and the mutual receptions, if you want mutual receptions or not. All of these things, once you start coding things for astrologers, you find everybody has a different way of doing things. And so we try to include as many requests as we can. 
and try to make it as flexible as we can. But this little section here of calculations is quite important. Parallax moon, I'm not going to go into the technical explanation of that at the moment, but that's something else sometimes people want. Now the dynamic section, we'll have a look at that a little bit later, but you'll see here also you've got stars, and I'm going to show you those two. They pertain to different sections, but your basic getting started in Astro Gold, if you want to get in, the first time you've got it, you open it up, you want to make sure you've got the mean calculation of Lilith or the true. You want to make sure that everything's aspected or no, I want, don't want this particular thing aspected. You can do it all in those first, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, six, six um, tabs there. Okay. Now, are there any questions? That's the um, end of one section. Yeah, I mean, my first question is, is how much space do I actually need on my map? to um, put this program on there. And I believe you have to have another program to do that, to split the... the no. Computer. You don't. No. So that's a good question. So what Kerry Ann's asked for the recording um, is how much space. I don't think space is a, um, an issue on the Mac. Um, I think it's more whether you've got the current operating system. And I can't remember which one it is at the moment, but if you've got a current Mac, current operating system, Mac OS, then you should be okay. But the requirements are on the website at the bottom. You <coughs> say um, computer requirements. Um, the other thing is um, this is this Astro Gold is directly for Mac. So if you're using Solify, you need to get a virtual machine and you need to split your computer and you need to use um, a, a virtual machine such as Parallels and then you need to put Windows on on top of that. So if, and that would be true of any Windows software. You can put any Windows software on your Mac doing that. 